I love my city. We all love our city. We want to keep our water in the Great Lake area, all of our water clean. When you think of all the ways that we use water, obviously to cook, to bathe, to recreate in, but the most intimate use we have of water is we drink it, we consume it. A lot of people are surprised if you go and, and tell a person that there's ibuprofen and, and acetaminophen and birth control medications in that stream, they'd probably say, they'd, they'd act surprised. Because these chemicals are very hydrophilic, they end up in our water systems and our wastewater treatment plants are not designed to treat it. You know, they're doing what they've always been intended to do. They're removing bacteria, they're removing nitrates, but these pharmaceuticals and these emerging contaminants are just never part of the equation. What we do know sends a message that there are clearly some concerns on these low levels that we're seeing uh, in our drinking water supplies, our lakes, rivers, and streams, basically in the Great Lakes. Fisheries are being impacted in ways where the fish are developing feminine features as a result of the endocrine disruptors that are part of the pharmaceutical releases that we're seeing throughout the world, actually. So the first concern would be, am I getting unintended exposures to pharmaceuticals by consuming fish that have been exposed to these compounds either through a wastewater treatment plant or other potential sources? Also in terms of sport, if there's an impact to the fish and fish populations, they may not be able to catch the big lunkers or even the types of fish they want because the environment has been impacted from these exposures. So in this lab setting, we are using very low concentrations of pharmaceuticals and exposing it to Daphnia, which are water fleas. And these species are keystone species and they would affect the entire ecosystem because higher animals, fish, would depend on them. There have been studies in Europe that are showing impacts to amphibians as well and frogs. You know, it, it has an impact that uh, is showing in the environment already. And as we see this continued throughout uh, time and possibly seeing the, uh, the levels increase, we could see even greater impacts. There should definitely be programs where we can collect these pharmaceuticals that would be extremely helpful to preserving our ecosystem and our environment. The logical place to get rid of the medications uh, is actually at the pharmacy. The value of uh, the Yellow Jug program is that it's an opportunity to do it easily. Pharmacists are the most accessible health profession that's out there. I think that the Yellow Jug program is a, is a great innovative idea of trying to figure out how do we assure that the medications that people don't want anymore get into appropriate uh, uh, disposal rather than flushing down the toilet where they end up in our water system. Well, you need water to survive. And so, I mean, it's, it's like I mentioned before, it's certainly water quantity is an issue in some areas, but water quality is another issue. So the more we put our stamp on the environment, the more potential there is to degrade the waters. No matter where you live, no matter what age group you are in, it impacts everybody. Um, this is vital to all of us, as water is vital to our life and our vitality and our own sustainability, this program is vital to everybody. My hope for the future is that the thought of pouring a medication down the toilet would be unheard of, that the yellow jug would be recognizable on site to everyone. Everyone's going to know about keeping our water safe and pure as it can be, as possible. And that would be my hope for the future. For more information about the Yellow Jug Old Drug Program, go to greatlakescleanwater.org.